Hey guys, Rocket Sledge here with another episode of Rocket League Life Hacks. And today we're going to be talking about demolition avoidance. A few months back, I put out a demo dodge tutorial centered on a very specific and seldom used maneuver. Though the views were low, the response was very positive, and if you haven't watched it yet, I definitely recommend you click that link in the corner and save it for later. Now I've always stressed that someone who is good at demoing is usually going to be good at avoidance as well. They should be able to recognize situations that they're in danger and know what to do to stay alive. After over 30,000 demos, I think I'm probably overqualified to teach this class. To go along with that, I also get many opportunities to practice my avoidance techniques. You see, when I meet a player in a match that knows my name, often their main goal becomes demolishing me. Games sometimes devolve into a chase fest like this ranked standard game we see here. As we watch this clip, you can see that avoidance has many aspects that could be hard to teach. You need to be aware of your surroundings, and keep track of cars that might be outside your view. Your reactions must be both quick and unpredictable. Here you see me taking advantage of a lull in their attacks to remind them just who the real demo guy is. But that's something for a more advanced student, so you can just ignore it for now. Okay, getting back to the avoidance examples, this situation here shows that you might need to briefly leave the ball because it's more important that you just don't die right now. And finally, you have to be able to recognize when you're in a compromised position and try to get clear by going in an unexpected direction. In this case, when I landed, I went away from the ball instead of towards it. So taking into account these challenges, I've decided to keep Demo Avoidance 101 simple and focus on combating one specific type of demolition attack. The attack in question is actually something I taught in my original demolition tutorial, seen here. The act of leading your target instead of chasing it is a very simple but powerful technique. As a target, it can be difficult to notice you're being hunted, and as an attacker, it's easy to take advantage of players that move in predictable ways. In this video, we're going to look at how you can recognize you are being tracked, and a couple ways to avoid those dirty demo guys. The first move is called the break check. Now, unlike a real life break check, which I have defined on the board, you will not be doing this when the attacker is directly behind you. That never goes well. But the quick use of your reverse trigger at the right time is a simple move that will foil most target tracking demo attempts. This maneuver will be useless if you don't know how to spot when a player is tracking you or know when to actually apply the brakes. Like I said before, it's hard to give advice about awareness or reaction time, but I think you'll find these examples useful as you continue to build on these skills. Okay, if we freeze frame here, we can see the blue player Pickles looks like he's racing to the other end of the field for no apparent reason. But an overhead view tells a very different story. He's lining me up for a perfect tracking demo as I rotate back. This is hard to spot at game speed unless you know what to look for. Also, this isn't mindless demo chasing. I play in a league against Pickles and can attest that he knows exactly what he's doing. Notice how my teammates are both in a bad position while well, Blue's about to get a good hit on the ball. Dying right now will create a great scoring opportunity. Fortunately, a perfectly executed break check keeps me in the play, and I'm able to safely clear the ball out. Using break checks against average demo attempts is pretty straightforward. Recognize you're being tracked, and time your stop accordingly. Watching people helplessly fly past is almost as satisfying as getting a demo yourself. But there is a more advanced target leading attempt that you do need to watch out for. A follow-through demo that comes directly after playing the ball can be hard to predict and react to. Let's look at how I handle these kinds of attacks, and then we'll come back to this play and talk about what this poor guy could have done differently. Alright, so this guy's gamer tag was Demo, so the way he played was not too much of a surprise. Here he makes a nice transition from ball play into demo attempt. Only I'm not where he expected me to be. This goes back to what I talked about in the intro. Sometimes you need to recognize that the ball can wait, and it's more important to dodge a demo right now. Once again, ignore the retaliatory demo, you're not ready for that yet, and it won't be on the test. Going back to my demo example, you can see that the player rushed himself to play the ball and followed an easy to predict path even for me as I came out of the air. Becoming too focused on the ball is a common issue and results in plays like this one, where the player just straight out sacrifices himself to my very obvious attack. You guys that still complain about demos being easy or unskilled, well, stop making them so easy. Seriously, this is on you. 
The second avoidance method is one I really don't see too often, but it can be useful if you think a simple break check will be too dangerous or predictable. It can also help you maintain your momentum, which is very important in Rocket League. I call it baiting. Baiting is a way to exploit your opponent's focus on leading their attack. If you follow an unusual path, it will often end up with the player missing the demo, as well as putting him out of position on the play. This once again relies on recognizing that you have time to move away from the ball, or at least make a longer rotation. This guy obviously expected me to turn into the net, as most players would in this situation. Instead, I turn the opposite way, which causes his lead to fail, and him to not be in position for the pass. Now obviously you can't just ignore the ball and lead the guy all over the field. Your goal is usually to be back in position as quickly as possible, but baiting will often allow you to stall and choose the right time to dodge. It also can be effective when combined with a jump or a break check at the end. Here we have a player trying to use a bait move on me, but there's a couple things that go wrong for him. First of all, he should notice that I'm not taking the bait. This is especially obvious during that last turn at the end. An experienced demo player like myself is going to be harder to fool. My only goal is to keep him from getting to the net. I don't actually care if I get the demo or not. Thus, I avoid tracking him too far out. But really, the main failure was him focusing on the ball and the concern for that open net that got the best of him. It's true that he probably needed to get there as quick as possible, but I would recommend adding a jump as part of his turn back or even going up on the wall where it would have been harder for me to catch him. A tight 360 might have been possible too, though I'm not sure there was enough time. Baiting can take on many forms, but once mastered, it will give you another avoidance tool that's useful for making your attacker look like a fool while you still maintain rotation. This brings today's class to an end. Your homework assignment for the weekend is to stop getting demoed. And if you find that hard, don't get salty. Instead, closely analyze your play and figure out why you're such an easy target. Remember, not all demos are preventable, but with the proper education, you too can become an avoidance master. I'm Dr. Sledge, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and check out my other content.